Hello, I'm Andrew Collins and welcome to MewTube. I'm here in East Sussex and the reason I'm here is that I'm at the beating heart of Cats Protection, the National Cat Centre. What a great place to be. So while I'm here, we're going to find out a lot more about what happens at this fantastic charity. We'll also get some helpful hints on how to make your own cat's life even better. And we'll hear from in-house specialists. So that's what's going to happen today. There's lots to do, lots to fit in. So why not just curl up, relax and enjoy? Let's see what's coming up on today's show. We'll be talking to one of our advocacy team about the Perfect Landlords campaign. We'll be learning about how to prepare your feline friends for the great British summer in our warm weather advice slot. Our in-house behaviourist, Daniel, will be talking us through some of the standard cat toys and finding out why play is so important to your cat. We'll be looking ahead to the National Cat Awards 2019 and looking back at last year's fantastic event. You may even see one or two familiar faces popping up. And perhaps best of all, we'll be looking at some of the fantastic videos and photos that you've sent us as part of the Cat Men Do campaign. Well, it's looking like a show that's going to be as packed as a tin of sardines. Mm, save that for later. First, we're going to look at an animation that will give you some advice on how to look after your furry friend in the hot weather. So you see, it's so important that we look after our cats in hot weather and there's always something new to learn. Right, now, I'm joined by Madison from Cats Protection's advocacy team to talk about a very important campaign. Hi, Madison. Hello, it's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure to have you here. OK, let's talk about this very important campaign, the Perfect Landlords. Tell us all about it. So Perfect Landlords is all about trying to get more landlords to allow cats in their properties. Um, unfortunately, there's many landlords out there that say no pets or pets not considered and, it, and it's a real shame because people then have to give up these beloved animals to charities such as Cats Protection and in the last five years it's actually been one of the top five reasons for people relinquishing their animals to the charity um, through no fault of the cats, no, through, no fault of the owners. So we're trying to change this and encourage more landlords to see the benefits of allowing cats so that we can have happy landlords, happy tenants and um, of course happy cats. So I was very lucky. Uh, I lived in a flat in London, rented, and we were allowed to have pets and we had two lovely kittens and everything was fine. It's not always the case though, is it? 
landlords understandably want to protect their investment and um, there are a lot of landlords that are worried about damage. So in the research that Cats Protection did, um, of the landlords who didn't allow cats, 62% of them were worried about damage to the property, to the garden, to the furniture, if it was a furnished um, house available. But what we actually found was of the landlords who did allow cats in their property, 75% had never experienced any damage at all. And some of these landlords had hundreds of properties. So it is a concern, but it, you know, it doesn't always arise. And if it does happen, then there's always a deposit to be able to um, call upon to get money back from the tenant. And the tenant can do loads of things to make sure that damage doesn't happen. So they can provide scratching posts and it's always good to have them near doors or windows um, or your sofa, you know, natural places that cats might want to scratch. And they can play with their cat. Um, they really love that for, sort of fun time with their owner. And it's really good for them to get out the energy that they've got. The survey also showed that there was a lot of landlords that were worried about flea infestations. Um, but of the landlords we surveyed who allowed cats, only 2% had ever experienced this kind of problem. And it's a really easy solution um, for the landlord to make sure that they've got a clause in their tenancy agreement that says that the cat must be treated for fleas um, as preventative treatment as well. So once the cat's given this sort of um, treatment, then nothing's going to go wrong and fleas will be prevented. I like the idea of clause. <laughs> in, a, in a, a contract. The, um, it's a myth then, effectively. A lot of uh, people who are, uh, who are renting out their properties think that cats are just little machines that tear everything apart, but that's not actually true. And so they have no reason, really, to put that clause in. Exactly, yeah. I mean, it's understandable that landlords are worried about their properties because it's their investment. It means a lot to them. But um, really, you know, there's not much damage that cats can do. And there's so many ways that landlords can mitigate it. Um, and the clauses that I mentioned are available on our website as a download. So landlords can pop them straight into their tenancy agreement. Because um, unfortunately, our research actually found that over a third of landlords are just taking standard tenancy agreements, which may come from online or from their letting agent. They're not reading through them. They might not even know that no pets is in there. Um, and we want to be able to change this and give them positive clauses that promote responsible cat ownership, um, which can all be found on the website. So you're taking what is seen as a problem and turning it into a positive? Definitely. You know, there's so many benefits for landlords um, out there. So if they allow cats in their property, then they can actually appeal to a wider pool of tenants. Um, there's many people out there, in including myself, who really want a cat um, and have struggled to find um, contracts that will allow it. And if you're appealing to that wider pool of tenants, you're more likely to get somebody quicker so your property is not empty for as long. Um, and I think a lot of cat owners actually really respect and value your property once they've found it because it's so difficult to get one and they don't want to move. They treat it as their home, um, more likely to feel settled, which is great for the landlord because they won't get those turnarounds every six months with new tenants coming in. And it, you know, we just want to promote pr um, responsible pet owners and make sure that um, landlords and tenants are both happy. It's something really important to think about, I think, because as you say, if you're just using standard text and not really reading it, you're actually putting that out there and actually reducing the amount of people that might come and rent from you. Definitely. And there's loads that tenants can do as well um, to try and make themselves more um, appealing to landlords. So they can create a little pet CV for their cat, um, which is a, a little one page side of A4. And you just put information about your cat, including the uh, microchipping number, where they're registered at the local vets, um, a picture so the landlord can see what that cat looks like. And if they've lived in accommodation before, they can actually get a reference from the previous landlord, which can say the cat caused no damage, the cat slept all day, you know, it's really friendly. Um, and this can help give landlords that peace of mind to make sure that they're accepting that cat with confidence. Excellent. And if people want to find out more? They can visit the website, um, which is cats.org.uk slash perfectlandlords. Um, there's lots of advice on there for both landlords and tenants. And you can actually download our Perfect Landlords guide off the website, which has got really helpful tips for landlords to accept cats with confidence. And there's also lots of tips for tenants, including a downloadable um, pet CV that they can actually fill in for their own cat or get the cat to do it themselves. Definitely. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Madison. We've still got plenty more to get through on this particular YouTube, so let's find out what's coming up next. Our in-house behaviourist, Daniel, is going to come along and tell us why it's so important to stimulate your cat and why play is so important in this regard. He's also going to show us a lot of cat toys. We'll be looking back at the National Cat Awards 2018. What a fantastic event it was. We'll be reliving some of the great feline stories from some of the winners as we prepare for this year's event.
And finally, we'll be handing over to you, our lovely followers, and looking at some of the great photos and videos that you sent via social media for our Cat Men Do campaign. Well, there's plenty to look forward to there. But right now, we're going to be talking to Daniel, in-house behaviour manager here at Cats Protection. We're going to be talking about cat play and how important it is. Hi, Daniel. Now, we know that cats do play. Um, are they basically meeting a kind of primal need? Absolutely. It is hugely important that we make more of an effort to get our cats to play. Uh, cats and how they play is very similar to their predatory hunting behaviours that is very innate to them. And you can sort of see it in different sequences of play that, that cats show. So you'll have some cats that sort of do the bit where they watch and then stalk, and some cats will watch and stalk and pounce. And then you'll get some doing the, the whole sequence all at once. And it is something that is in their, should we say, natural programming for, for something that they need to do. And actually, when we look at sort of welfare needs of cats, it's something that we should be actively encouraging because it is a, a natural behaviour that we want them to be able to exhibit in the right way. So it's tapping into something that they kind of almost instinctively do. Absolutely. And, and it's really interesting. Sometimes you, you hear a, a bit of a myth and some well-meaning cat owners, they don't want to teach their kittens to play because they're worried that the kittens will then grow up to learn how to hunt and, and hunt wildlife and, and birds. But cats... And kittens already have that knowledge in them, uh, as it were. So actually, by not playing with them, we're not giving them a good, suitable outlet or alternative for this behaviour. So it's much better for them to, to get onto toys and be introduced to toys and really enjoy toys, not only to sort of reduce that uh, behaviour and tick that box for them being able to exhibit that behaviour, but there's so many benefits to them. It helps tire them out, uh, releases good endorphins. Uh, it should really be seen as something that uh, every day with your cat, just doing a bit of toy play with them. And it's something that you could leave a cat with a load of toys all day and it might play with them, but actually your part in that is actually very important. Absolutely, and again, for, for so many reasons. Firstly, cats are very much geared to notice things that move uh, and their play type behaviours very much mimic the predatory type behaviours. So stationary objects aren't massively interested <laughs> to a lot of cats. They're, they're not moving like prey. So we want our toys to, to replicate what would be sort of their, their prey species and that gets them really engaged and motivated. So we want to be around with our cats as well as for the cat's benefit, for our benefit, it's just a really fantastic way. People often think that sort of stroking the cat for hours on end is the only way of bonding with the cat, but actually doing some really good toy play with the cat, and it only needs to be a couple of minutes a few times a day, that'll make a huge difference in your relationship with your cat. Sometimes if you get really light toys, uh, like a ping pong ball, so uh, if a cat hits that, that goes for ages and ages. If you've got big, heavy rubber balls or things that just stay there, the cat tries to move it, it doesn't move, it doesn't stimulate the cat, the, the, they're not excited by it. So it's very much what people need to engage with. There are some, when we talk about sort of food puzzles or food games, that you can leave with your um, cat. But sort of generally toys, you want to be there interacting with your cat. I have to be honest now. I want to interact with what you've brought <laughs> along with you. <laughs> can you talk us through the toys? Absolutely. We can't talk about toys without having a look at some. Yeah. Uh, first off, this is the Jolly Moggy Fun Feather uh, teaser, and this is from uh, Rosewood. So this is an example of a fishing rod toy. Now, for people who maybe have not seen one before and think they look a bit scary, this is probably your best bet for encouraging your cat into play. They're really fantastic uh, fishing rod toys for encouraging that sort of behaviour. Now, what you want to make sure you do is don't go up and dangle it in your cat's face. Now, as these are supposed to mimic prey species, we're not going to have a mouse run right up to a cat and say, eat me, eat me. So we need to make sure this moves in a similar way. So what you'll do is when you've got a bit more space, you're going to tease it around, you're going to stop it, hide it behind objects, tease it around a little bit more. Don't think that your cat is necessarily going to jump on it straight away. It is part of that process where they observe things and they stalk it and then they pounce on it. And then you can flick it around a few times. If your cat does go to pounce, the first time you're introducing it, feel free to let it uh, have it and have a bit of a play with it. But then after you're into it a bit more, they can miss it a few times and you can move it away. And it just keeps that encouragement and keeps them coming back. So this is really fantastic. And so many people have said to me when they have had cats that don't play, uh, when you look at a fishing rod toy, it really gets them to play. So this is a great example. There are different versions out there, but it's sort of finding which one works for your cat. Ideally, you want one that is quite nice and light up the top here. You'll get some that are quite um, heavy all the way down, but we want it to be really nice so it moves quite nice and lightly, particularly with feathers, it really encourages them. So that stimulates sort of one aspect of the, the, the cat's need for play. Uh, the other one we are going to turn to are... Uh, 
giant trout kicker uh, from uh, Freak Me Out. And again, you'll get different versions of kicker toys that have cat in it then. Ah, uh, right. Now, if I ask you, have you ever seen a cat that uh, will run up to a toy or unfortunately sometimes a person and they'll wrap their four uh, limbs around it and sort of kick with their back feet? Yes. That is a very natural behaviour. That is very much when they catch the prey, they will then do that, particularly with larger prey species like bunnies. So we want to give them this to replicate that behaviour. So whereas the fishing rod toy, that's more for the pounce and they get the excitement from the pounce, this is then sort of for cats who really like the afterwards. So very often you will see cats, uh, they'll wrap their four, four paws around it and they'll really kick with the back and have a little gnaw on it. The catnip gets them really excited in it as well. Uh, I do know one of the members of uh, crew, she has this for her cat and absolutely loves it. But again, <laughs> you'll get different versions of kicker type toys for, for different cats and individual needs. But that idea of having a fishing rod toy and a kicker toy, uh, at both preferences for the cat is, is really useful. What we should say about the fishing rod toy is that it's really important not to leave it out with the cat. Uh, as it's got long stringy bits to them, we don't want the cat being a bit too enthused and getting themselves tangled up. Whereas the kicker toy, you can leave out with the cat. Now, say you have a cat that doesn't like uh, a toy play, or if you've got an older cat and, uh, or a cat that doesn't necessarily engage in play, you can try and stimulate them with something uh, something like this. Did you make this? Oh, yeah, this is handcrafted by myself. <laughs> no, this is actually uh, the, the Trixie uh, Activity Fun Board. Uh, it's a way of providing food for the cat so that they have to uh, think about how they get the food uh -huh, out. Right. Uh, now, you'll hear it called lots of different terms if you're searching online for it. So enrichment feeding, puzzle feeding, interactive feeding. So so say, for example, you put some dry biscuits in here, you can put them across here or in here. The cat then has to work to get them out. So they can uh, scoop their paw in there, they can try and paw out here, or some cats will just try really hard with their face and try and bury their face in it. Uh, if you're worried about your cat putting on a little bit of weight, don't worry, you can use uh, your, dry, your cat's dry food allowance or with something that is wipeable like this, uh, you can use sort of wet food. And again, there are literally hundreds of different thousands of ideas of enrichment puzzle feeders that you can use for the cat. You can do some that are homemade and you can do some that are shop bought like that. So we really would encourage people, and particularly if a cat that doesn't necessarily engage in play or you've not managed to find the right toy, try and use some sort of food enrichment for them. That takes a lot of the same boxes as well. And is it important for the human being also to be engaged by the toy? Absolutely. You will see human beings react with absolute delight. And, and people often don't attribute cats as being really smart. Cats are incredibly smart. Whenever people watch a cat figure out a food puzzle like this, it, it blows your mind. And you actually sort of realise that cats have a lot going on upstairs and, and they really are thinking. In the initial stages, some cats may need a bit of encouragement as to how to work them out. You can start with easy versions uh, and uh, move on to more difficult versions. So the human might be involved in that. But that is certainly something that you can leave down with your cat and they can enjoy while maybe you pop out for a little bit. I think probably we should pop out and let, let some cats <laughs> yeah. play with those because we'll ruin it if we try Yeah, very much so. yeah, I'd quite like to get some food out of those <laughs> little bowls. So before we run off and play, is there anything else that people need to know? Just a very final point is we just really want to encourage people not to use their hands or their feet to encourage cats to play, particularly kittens. As adorable as your new kitten may be when it's sort of lightly pawing on your hand, just imagine if it practices this behaviour now and it gets reinforced or it finds that it's good and enjoyable, it will continue it until it is a full-size cat and when you've got a full-size cat hanging off your hand, it's not just as fun. So we do encourage people to stick to, uh, to, the, to the toys. If you are worried that your cat isn't playing, there's plenty of toy options out there. Just keep exploring different options and never be tempted just to use your hands or feet to encourage play. Great. Thanks very much, Daniel. Thank you. He was on his best behaviour. Now then, we're going to look back at the National Cat Awards 2018. I was lucky enough not just to be a judge and to judge the categories, which was hard work but absolutely rewarding, but also I got to hear some of the amazing feline stories firsthand. Here's Lucy. Hi, I'm Lucy Pinder, reporting from the lovely Savoy Hotel in London for Cats Protection's National Cat Awards 2018. We've got a great day coming up. We've got amazing stories from our finalists. It's proof to everyone that cats can change people's lives because he's changed mine. We've got celeb judges, Bob Mortimer people, I'm judging Best Rescue Cat, which is a cat that's been rescued but has then gone on to become something of a hero. 
We've got Deborah Mead and... So I'm here at the National Cat Awards judging the most caring cat. We've got Justin Hawkins. I'll be judging the fur ever friends cat, the gurry. Get your tissues ready. It's quite emotional. Well, I sat on my own in a room watching the videos of the finalists and um, I might have got a little bit of dust in my eyes. He's there. He's, he's my best friend. He was... And coming out of hospital after so long, I needed a best friend and he became it. Uh, the finalists in my category, you know, they, they are all such extraordinary cats that um, it's very difficult to separate them. So I just had to judge it in terms of the cat that appealed most to me, really, as the cat that I'd like to take home. Sort of been a bit more, a bit more touched today, just watching everyone's stories. It really helps to see the impact that these animals and these cats can have on people's lives. Um, I found it very difficult to choose between the three. I wanted to see evidence of, of a cat giving something back more than you'd expect. Okay, Spends all his time with Joe, just being together, just companions. And you've got me. Yeah, and you might get to sleep on your bed or not. What do you reckon? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that'll be a treat. Yeah. <laughs> so difficult to to judge because you know they're all heroes, um, especially to the people that they that own them. Um, so it was a very difficult decision, but I, I I think I've come out with the right one. I hope. <laughs> Is Chusey making funny faces behind me? <laughs> is she? No, she is now. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's lovely. Obviously, you know Theo passed away a week ago, but this is the best way to remember him, really. Um, and to see his little face on the award, <laughs> um, it just reminds me of, of how much of a special cat he was, and just knowing that other people think that's well is pretty amazing. This year I was judging the overall category, uh, taken from Oh, the winners of each of the other categories, which is probably the hardest job of all. It was really difficult judging uh, this year because every, every story was so personal. But this year, and I'm not giving anything away, the winner was, I think, there was only one potential winner. There was one winner that stood out, it just had me in tears. I know that the other judges know we were all pretty much in agreement, so I think, I think everybody's very happy with the overall winner. The winner of the National Cat of the Year, Theo. Amazing, uh, absolutely amazing. If I was speechless before, I'm just kind of flatlined with words now, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, I just didn't expect it. Um, all of the nominations, everyone in that room, and the, the relationships they have with their cats are just so special. Um, so to come out and, and just be recognised with the main award was just incredible. I, I, I think it'd be very hard to pick out one particular story. Um, I think they were all extremely touching and uh, everyone on my table was very moved by them, I think. What a fantastic day we've had at the National Cat Awards here at the Savoy. Amazing finalists. Thank you to everyone who entered, who took part, who put today on. Thank you to the Savoy. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. We've had a lovely time. Come back next year. I know it's just cats here, but um, cats is my favourite. Well, as you can see, it was a star-spangled event and there was a lot of love in the room, I can promise you that. If you go to the Cats Protection website, you can now see some of the finalists from the 2019 awards and hear their stories. OK, to round out the show, we're going to look at some of the photos and videos that you, our lovely followers, sent to us via social media for our Cat Men Do campaign.
Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for on YouTube. It's been a packed show. I've enjoyed doing it. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Maybe you'll come and see us at the National Cat Centre or one of our shops or centres around the country, run by so many fantastic volunteers. And remember, we wouldn't be here without you. So thank you for your support. Goodbye.